there's some cool stuff coming out. Seriously. Starting off at number 5, we have Touch ID. Okay, so this one probably sounds really obvious, but hear me out. Everyone has what is basically a completely unique password on each finger, so it only makes sense to use them, right? Fingerprint scanners have been around for a while now, in laptops, and even an Android phone a couple years ago, the Motorola Atrix 4G. What makes all of this cool again is, surprise surprise, Apple. So the iPhone 5S has Touch ID, which is a fingerprint scanner built into the home button. This is a surprisingly awesome feature that allows you to simply tap your thumb against the button and bam, your iPhone is unlocked. Now a lot of people have been a little hesitant that Touch ID has been hacked or that the NSA is collecting their fingerprints. While no security is foolproof, to actually hack Touch ID is actually pretty hard. You'll need a super high res picture of someone's fingerprint, then you need to clean it up in Photoshop, print it out on a transparent sheet, and then pour latex to get a passable imprint. Way easier than guessing someone's passcode, right? On top of that, your fingerprint data is stored securely on the phone in a way that makes it basically impossible for anyone to ever get. It's basically a win-win for keeping your phone secure and still simple to use, all with the power of your thumb. At number four, we have Google Fiber. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this one out there. I'm incredibly jealous of everybody who has Google Fiber. It's just basically the greatest thing ever. Average internet speeds in the United States are 7.4 megabits per second, where fiber comes in at a full 1,000 megabits per second. It's 135 times faster. I mean, I just really don't know what else I can say about that, except that I want it. But what can you exactly do with such fast internet? Well, you could load every single one of my nearly 1,000 videos in full HD, and it would take you 9 minutes and 14 seconds. Or, you could download one of the best looking PC games out, Crisis 3, in just a minute and 7 seconds. Want to catch up on Game of Thrones? You could download the entire third season at Blu-ray quality in 53 seconds. I could keep going, but I think you get the idea. Google Fiber is stupid fast. Unfortunately, not everyone can get Fiber right now. It's available in Kansas City at the moment, and they're expanding to Provo, Utah and Austin, Texas. So while you and I probably won't have fiber anytime soon, super fast internet is coming and I can't wait. At number three, we have the Oculus Rift. Earlier this year at E3, I got to try Oculus Rift, this goofy looking headset right here. Now basically it's a screen with a couple of bits of optics as well as a motion sensor inside and it is one of the coolest pieces of tech that I've seen in a long time. It's a full 3D virtual reality headset and it is the most immersive way I've ever played a video game. Thanks to the head tracking, you can look around in-game and actually see what's going on, which is incredibly awesome. The display built into the Oculus is only 1280 by 800 which when it's right in front of your face is fairly low resolution, however the final consumer version will be 1080p. One of the coolest things about the Rift is how easily you forget you're wearing it. Because you see a different image with each eye, the 3D is totally natural unlike 3D movies for example. And even if you wear glasses, you can just swap whatever lens you'd like in and you're good to go. I've been playing with the Rift for a little while now, and once the final version is ready, it's going to be practically a must-have for gaming. At number two, we have 3D printing. Okay, so this is definitely the weirdest sounding thing on my list. I mean, come on, even normal 2D printers still suck. A 3D printer will typically use plastic to print layer after layer of material down until a full model is complete. The cool thing is that you can buy your own 3D printer for as little as $500 and begin printing your own real objects. While plastic is most common, higher end printers can also print using metal. For example, the Audi RSQ from the movie iRobot was 3D printed, a bite on a much larger scale. So why would you want a 3D printer? Well right now it's fairly limited as far as the size of the objects that you can print. Unless of course you've got yourself a pile of money to get a really big expensive 3D printer, however things are improving very quickly. Earlier this year, the company Defense Distributed was able to print all the parts needed to put together a 3D printed gun. While that's probably illegal, 3D printing definitely isn't, and as printers get more and more advanced and cheaper, I can see all kinds of awesome uses for them soon. Coming in at number one is Google Glass. As far as new tech goes, it's hard to beat glass. This brings a lot of what's great about your smartphone and it puts it on your face. 
Right now, Google has released the Explorer edition of Glass, which while a little basic, still lets you pull up useful data like directions with Google Maps. The way it works is that it has a small translucent crystal display that's up above your eye so that when you're not using glass you can totally forget it's there. However, when you need to look something up, for example, bam, it lights up and you're good to go. It's also got a built-in camera, which is a surprisingly awesome feature to snap a picture or video totally hands-free. Just like smartphones and tablets have blown up over the last few years, wearables like glass are definitely the next big thing. Samsung has just released the Galaxy Gear smartwatch, and the Pebble has been out for a little while. However, for me, nothing quite matches up to the power of having all this technology built inside your glasses. I can honestly see a future version of Glass replacing the smartphone, giving Google Glass the number one spot in my top five coolest new tech. So now it's your turn. What are some of the cool new tech things that you guys are most looking forward to? Definitely be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, Ting. Ting is mobile that makes sense. There are no contracts to sign, and you won't be stuck with an outdated phone for two years. Unlike most plans, with Ting you only pay for what you use. For example, if you use less data this month than last month, your bill will actually go down, which is awesome. To see how much you could save if you switch, Ting has a savings calculator. For me, switching to Ting would save me on average $54 a month, and that includes things like tethering, which sometimes costs extra. If you want to check Ting out and support the channel, go to austin.ting.com and you'll save $25 on buying a Ting device or get a $25 credit if you bring your own phone. That's austin.ting.com, so go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel so you catch lots more videos like this and you're always kept up to date with the latest and greatest. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.